coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. If a blacksmith forges the sword, who sells it? Mm -hmm. He does, because whoever smelt it, dealt it. (laughs) (laughs) Dum, dum, da, da, Village Idiom. Hello! And welcome to The Village Idiom! (laughs) We are a podcast Podcast. that every single week we choose a popular saying and take an admittedly shallow and hopefully comedic once in a while interesting if we're really lucky educational dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but mostly we're going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. (laughs) Samala Malakalam. That quickly. To you, my brother. That quickly. (laughs) Did you say that correctly? I don't know. (laughs) You're still making fun of my hat. I've been wearing it a week now. Yeah. I like, refuse to take your insults. <laughs> I think it's called a, a tachia. A tachia. Did you look it up? Yeah. Because I was like, I was like, why should people not wear a tachia? And uh, was the number one thing if you're not Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> so it must have some thermal properties that you enjoy. It is. It's cold outside. Hmm. I can't go outside without a hat. Actually, it's warming up. It's been a nice sunny week. Yeah, it actually has. Things are, Perfect timing for things spring are break. Well. Spring break. Hope everybody's enjoying their spring break and getting the sunshine that we've got. Nice and warm. So, uh, did you did you see the vehicle outside? Top off. Top. Well, soft top on. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. As soon as I see it reach sixteen degrees for the first time, <laughs> that'd be Celsius, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Fahrenheit. Then we <laughs> sixteen Fahrenheit. Then we swap the hard top <laughs> for the soft top. And uh, start wearing soft tops on my own top. I had a, a just something interesting <laughs> that I think is interesting. So, um, a mutual friend of ours, Al, yeah, uh, somehow has access to cows that get butchered in the spring. Somehow, somehow, I, I don't know where goes, he finds he these goes things. Hunting. <laughs> is, that, is that what it is? He goes hunting in farmland. <laughs> <laughs> just head out to like Maple Ridge and start blowing away bovines. I see one. Shh, 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 shh. Mm, he's got a cow call. He just sits there and stares at them. They don't run. He walks right up to them. <laughs> Hello, friendo. Puts him in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> just bends down, keeps chewing. Anyway, Al. Okay, so an Al gives the call that there's an eighth of a cow left after... His cow sales this year. Mm-hmm. Do I want in on on his cow sales? So connected with Al, got myself an eighth of a cow. Interesting. And so I haven't cooked any of it yet, but it's it's like wrapped up, it's chopped up. It, it's not like you just get an eighth of a cow. <laughs> <laughs> it's still got to hide in which eighth? You got the head end or the tail end? It would really matter what eighth you got. It really would. Yeah, so I'm excited. So Wait, I'm going to be yeah yeah. So. <laughs> It's just a butt, a you'd butt have, in the back of its legs. It's like I got the worst eight. Unless you go this way, like down its spine, that's in half. But it, then, what if you just got the spine portion? You can't. That's that's divided in half. No, so like the oh, I see. <laughs> so the very center, I see. Yeah. I see where you're going. Okay. And so then each half would be quartered. Mm. So yeah. Anyway. Anyway, how are you enjoying it? Well, I haven't enjoyed it yet. I'm oh. just excited to be. So it's like it's this all natural, like non hormony, right. non whatever they do to cows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just living its life until it wasn't. That's great. And now I'm going to eat it. Well, let me know if you actually taste a difference. I'm curious. I did. Okay. So this is another one. So same Al. I yeah. was eating his eggs. Well, not his eggs, but Crazy. his chicken's eggs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I personally. I can see the difference. Like it looks. You get them yellow, yellow oaks. Yeah, quite oaks. orange. And so I can wow. visually see a difference. I'm like, I don't really taste a difference. But people who I've shared Al's eggs with, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, these are amazing. Hmm. Excellent. Like, Excellent. So yeah, I'm curious to see if uh, fresh cow eggs or whatever <laughs> eighth you got. Cow eggs. Those are. Did you get the hooves? <laughs> you really have to cook them a long time. Break them down a bit. Yeah, you don't pick your teeth with them at the end? No. No. But if we did get our hands on some cow hooves, that would be just like a wicked like drink holder. Oh, interesting. Like, so you just like got a whole hoof and you're just like, glug, 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 and then you put it down and it stands by itself because it's a, it's a foot. Isn't it funny? Like, let's say you were like making it off the grid in the wild and yeah. you came across 
a cow skeleton and there's a hoof and you're like, oh, I'm going to make a cup out of that because you need to. <laughs> right. Yet at the same time, if you came across the tiniest little pile of of human toe clippings, you'd be like, ew. <laughs> You drink out of one, uh, completely deterred by the other. So toe clippings don't bug me. Oh, no? No. Okay. Well, there you go. No, that's Hope just... you find some little pile in the wild. <laughs> what would disturb me is if there was a pile of them. <laughs> just a pile of clippings. Just How the, big of a pile? Fact that How big exists. of a pile does it have to be to disturb you? <laughs> Enough that I noticed it is a problem. <laughs> like a mole My hill. eyesight's not so great, but if it's like... Is that a mole hill? What is that? No, it's a pile of toe clippings. You'd immediately stop doing what you're doing and just look around. Especially if that little gopher head you're about it. to be killed. <laughs> yeah. And then the week before, which I thought was fascinating because I hadn't had it yet. A friend said, have, have you ever had moose meat? Yeah, I have. And so now I have. And so he's like, I'll be right back. And so he drove home, came back with like a, a, mo- a moose roast. Was it? Oh, I was going to ask. So it was just moose meat. So I've only had moose sausage, mm. which was great. Um, my grandpa, actually a bunch of my relatives used to be hunters. The rest of us were barely gatherers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got to try a few. Gather at the, at the Save On Foods. The How, did way. you like it or have you tried that yet? So yes, I, I did it up It's in, different though, right? I was struggling to find the difference. Oh, really? Deb thought it was a little more metallic. Oh, did they drain it? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> and we got the part where it got shot. I don't know. But anyways, I, I didn't find that at all. I'm like, I would be hard pressed to tell the difference between this and like just cow. I guess. So, anyways, life See, is so, so interesting. As, as a sausage that my grandfather made himself mm-hmm. out of the animal he killed. killed himself, that sausage was unbelievable. I'm I'm ready to do this. Yeah. So yeah, we got our our hunting. Well, we didn't, don't have our hunting licenses, but we got our or firearms licenses. Right. And so the hope is to at some point. I'm still waiting for mine. Shut up. But I was on the phone this week. Mm -hmm. I had one more hurdle to jump through. They were really, they were really checking me out. No kidding. What did you do? I started wearing these hats. (laughs) Uh, No, they, they were checking out because of how I filled it out. And then there were some issues with it. Anyway, long story short is they walked me through completing it over the phone this week. So they're like, it's done. It's on, it's on its Oh, way. okay. So we got to get this out of our system finally. Yeah. This thing's so, clogging up the, took, the took government. Took me a while. Took me a while. You're slowing down the Canadian yeah. government. Yeah, that was fun. Just doing that together was fun. That but, was fun. But, so but, the uh, next step uh, of funness will be to go out and blow away some animal. <laughs> I mean, uh, hunting I mean, responsibly. I mean, I mean, hunt responsibly. <laughs> have you been hunting? No. Yeah, no, neither have I. I've been in the woods. Well, I have with a twenty-two. Oh, yes. yes, and so, shot a squirrel. Yes, I have been. I thought you meant. This is re- the kind of stuff that now. totally gets us canceled. What, everything, why? everything we've talked about so far, you, from animals you, to hats. You have to be able to like feed yourself. I think. I think that's a. Yeah, good I thing. didn't eat the squirrel I shot. Well, waste not, want not. Is that what today's idea is? I didn't make is? this hat <laughs> out of a squirrel. <laughs> Made a marble holder. Whatever you hunt first, you got to make a hat out of. You could probably make one moccasin. Out of a squirrel? Yeah. Yeah, if you keep the head on. If the, if the head was still on. Yeah. So it looked like a pair of Crocs with like that Are you headlight? stepping into its back or its stomach? No, I'd step into its back. So that it looks like it's walking along with you? Yeah, because if you step into its stomach, it looks like you stepped on it and it's holding on for dear life. <laughs> it's just like wrapped around. You could do that. Oh, that way. Yeah, so it's like he's holding on, his head is bobbing up and if down. If you made leg warmers out of a bunch of them, <laughs> it just looks like squirrels are climbing up your legs. <laughs> It's so ridiculous. I forgot. What, 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 what is today's idiom? Because we're doing idioms. Uh, oh, yeah. That's what this podcast is about 10 minutes in. Uh, well, let's let's introduce today's idiom by introducing you <laughs> to a show called House of Cards. Do you remember that? I, I've heard of it. And uh, this is our fellow canceled member, uh, Kevin Spacey, introducing today's... Canceled for different reasons. <laughs> different. Martyr craves more than anything is a sword to fall on. So it's worded a little bit different. Here's the actual wording from Homeland. Because she's the one asking me to fall on my sword. Fall on your sword. Fall on my sword. Mm-hmm. That's that's today's idiom. Ironically, when I did uh, look up some things that were you know, just around the subject, uh, politics came up a few times. Yes, actually, it came up a lot. Yeah, in, in, a, in the origins research too. So I thought that was fascinating. They're like, and I don't 
particularly follow a bunch of U.S. politics, but they're like Nikki Haley should fall on her sword and and end her campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was just just fascinating that it's got a political tie-ins. I don't know if it does in the origins, but we shall see. Funny thing about swords is like, do you ever meet somebody and you're like getting to know them, uh, another guy, and and I don't know hobbies comes up and don't you immediately compartmentalize people if they say, oh, I collect swords. Like, yeah, I'm like, you're cool. That's a we type. should be friends. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Too. I was looking for like sword related puns and stuff for today. Something with like dual meanings. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And? Yeah. I knew it was too subtle. It's like sword. It's a dual. It's a dual oh, meaning. dual. Yeah, see, but I have to explain it. It's, yeah. it's way too deep. I was thinking double edged. Ah, oh, that's a good one. Dual. Yeah. Yeah. You win. So if I had a friend who's like, man, I've got this really wicked sword collection, I'd be like, that is so cool. I'm not like coming over to your house. I don't late. think that. I picture them practicing in their room alone. <laughs> alone? Yeah. Just Oh, you, you think they're a killer? If somebody no, no, has not, swords, completely, why are they doing it alone? Completely non threatening. Well, how do you get like, good at it if you're alone? I just that's how I picture somebody with their their katan, what's it called? Katana. Mm-hmm. Just in their room, loving life, that they own one. Flipping it around. Oh, I did come across Taking their this. light lampshade down. Inter- <laughs> well, you'd, have to, you'd want to practice with somebody. Your sword play? Yes. You're thinking fencing. Oh, any sword play, because this will be the only way to get better. If, it's just if like, we looked up YouTube, if we looked on YouTube. It's going to be LARPing. Practicing, yeah. It's going to yeah. be people alone. Flip in their swords. What's the difference between Bill Cosby and a little sword? <laughs> I don't know. One's a little rapier, <laughs> which is terrible. But that's a terrible name for a sword. We, I thought when you, were you gonna, said katana. I thought I you were like, going to say something along the next day. One is still a little sword, and the other's a little sore. No, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, in terms of terrible names, that's a terrible name for rapier. A, sword, a rapier. Yeah. yeah. There, well, is that where rapier wit comes from? I don't know. Like it, your 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 wit cuts like a sword. Oh, that was that Alec Baldwin and Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. Can occurred. you be more rapier? <laughs> no, it was rapier. He's like, I don't think it sounds like that. I think it's rapier. It's like you you're, you think you're, you're more rapier than me. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. So, <laughs> but is that where rapier wit or rapier wit? I think it comes from. I think it's rapier. Is, but it, that it cuts like a sword. Your your wit. It's so fascinating. It must be. Yeah. Yeah, because you never hear that word outside of... No, you either hear rapier wit or you hear exacto wit. <laughs> yeah. And both cut like a knife. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Anyway. <laughs> it's exacto wit. <clears throat> exacto wit. Okay. I did come across this little uh, illegitimate uh, children. You can use this around the water cooler. It was actually a piece of trivia. Medieval okay. trivia. Okay. Yeah. If a blacksmith forges the sword, who sells it? If a blacksmith forges the sword, who sells it? Mm-hmm. He does, because whoever smelt it, dealt it. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> there you go. It's funny that it's called forge. You forged a sword, because if you forge a check. Oh. Like, you know, if you forge a sword, you're like, way to go. Wow, what's Like skill? you made a metallic you forge check. A check. You made a big metallic check. I you forged forge it. You forge a check, you go to jail. You forge a sword. You're like, cool. <laughs> Is this a real check? It's a forgery. Because it's... Is this a real sword? Well, it's a forgery. <laughs> it's like a big metal check. It's like I tried to present <laughs> it to somebody. This is a forgery. <laughs> is a, but is is a sword a forgery? It's it, it has been smelt in some way, wouldn't it? That's funny. Forgery. Forge. Sword. Smelt. Dealt. <laughs> This is all rapier wit. So ridiculous. <laughs> well, in all of these things, uh, falling on your sword, have you ever had a chance where... To fall on a sword? Yeah. I've never run with a sword. I've never had Scissors. a sword. I don't know if I've held a sword. How about in, in the actual... In like the meaning Unless you of, talk about a plastic lightsaber. Have we got to the actual like meaning, how we use it in the world? Uh, no, well, we, we should, haven't actually. Yeah, we should get to that. Yeah, before we get into any origins, falling on your sword means to take responsibility... For something that has gone wrong, in particular to resign from a position, which is why it comes up in politics, uh, a way to acknowledge responsibility for something that has gone wrong. I will step down from this position. I will fall on my sword. I, I think uh, it, falling in your sword is like you have to have some capital in like to be the, the, the quick 
sword fo- follower on her. <laughs> 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 because so if, if, if you're like the low man on the totem yeah and then you're just like oh, i'll just quickly fall on your sword it's like oh this guy sucks well i i think that's kind of what does happen in politics is they choose a scapegoat to use another idiom mm-hmm. to fall on their sword so that somebody goes down but so but yeah so yes and but the person who can probably actually take the hit is the person that goes, oh man, that was my my bad. Depending on, uh, of course, like the severity. Yeah. The times of life where it's like, y- you just choose to like, I can make this all go away by just falling on the sword, even just, though I don't, I don't even think I should be falling on my sword, but I can right. make it all go away. So, yeah, falling on your sword, I think you're taking legitimate responsibility for something. Like that was me. But you could just fall on your sword just to like, all right, let's just make this end. Like, let, let's, this is, this is, this is dumb. I, I choose to just fall on my sword. You said this, but I said, no, but you said, no. Yeah, but just is, like, is that still sword. falling on your sword if you weren't actually responsible? If you don't feel you're responsible, you, but you could just make it all go away by going, yeah, you know, yeah. I can see your point. But I okay, think that's you, good. I think you just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's falling on your sword. If it wasn't really like you are bringing something to a close, you're right. But I think you're only falling on your sword if it really was you. See, I think you're falling asking, on someone else's sword. Well, we may get into that later. We might. I've got, I've got a little story. We might, <laughs> we might talk about that later. We might talk about it Nobody later. knows. <laughs> we don't even know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I don't know that it has to be that you did it. That you have to be the responsible one. It's just that you fell on your... Like, uh, that this was going on at, at, at his workplace and Mark fell on his sword and... Took no, responsibility. See, see, I think falling on your sword is as as I took responsibility for something I did. If I took responsibility for something you did, I fell on your sword. Hmm. Which I've only done once. <laughs> <laughs> the metaphor. <laughs> we were young. <laughs> falling on someone else's sword or falling on your sword. I don't know that you have to do it. You don't have to be the one. You just have to be the one that took responsibility for it. So if if yeah. if, if it so okay, here's the scenario. <clears throat> um, you're in a, uh, you're, you're camping. Okay. Yeah, I'm just making this up on, so yep. it, it's, it may fall apart here. So you're up camping yeah. and your kid accidentally, they're playing with a, a stick that's been in the fire and they accidentally set some leaves on, on fire yeah. b- beside the thing. The ranger comes and it's like, it's going to chew out somebody. Do you just like, I, do you just take responsibility to make it go away? Or do you like, ah, my kid's an idiot, you know, like you know, kick them out of the camping. No, I'd lot. probably step in. Now, is that, a, I fell on my sword. That is not my sword. No. You took responsibility for someone else. Yeah. That's not what falling on your sword means. Says you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <I> just, <laughs> that's me. That's a, so like in these political ones that I was reading, and yeah. even in the ones in like that you're talking about, we're going to get someone to fall on their sword. Yeah. If they, they were, didn't do it, if they didn't do it, then they're falling on someone else's sword. So, like, the one I was reading for the U.S. politics was, like, we're just going to get, like, Nikki Haley should just fall on her sword and, and right. end it. She didn't do anything. Maybe that's her problem. But So, in that case, if it means Nikki Haley should just step out of the running, mm-hmm. that is falling on her sword. Because it's, it's just ending her campaign. Yeah. So, but it's ending her campaign that she has done. It's failing. It's it's actually a bad analogy for her stepping away because she's not taking responsibility for anything. She's just bowing out. Hmm. Taking responsibility responsibility for her failed campaign. Yeah. If you want if you want hmm. to blame something, yeah. I, I I can see I can see your point. But, yeah. But uh, I'm gonna follow my sword and just uh, make this end because I I think you're you're on crack. Okay. So, well, let's get into origins then, because one of us has studied this I croquet. Said some words, where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. Origins. Alrighty then. Well, um, our origin story is just getting more interesting by the week. <laughs> wow. So the <clears throat> phrase falling on one sword now usually refers to people resigning from public office, which we've already said, but it did in fact originate from people committing ritual suicide by sword, as you probably could have guessed. Uh, it has been quite some time since men routinely <laughs> carried swords, and so the act of falling on one sword is now restricted to the figurative. 
uh, usage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I suppose it is possible for somebody to still literally do it. Uh, <laughs> Finding but, a sword would be the problem. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I thought of one exception to falling on your sword to bring it all to the end. It's not really you is if you're a part of a group. Hmm. And so the group's group fa- action group failure, but you fell on your sword. Yeah. But- so technically that's all of your sword. So it could be still you falling on your sword. Anyway, the expression was widely used following the resignation of Lord Peter Carrington. So we do kind of have an or- origin story, sort of Lord Peter Carrington resigned from his post as foreign secretary for Thatcher, uh, the Thatcher government in 1982. Very recent for us to be talking about an idiom's origin, 1982, Hmm. following Argentina's invasion of the Falkland uh, Islands. He was the last high-profile politician in the UK to take personal responsibilities for circumstances at that magnitude. The actual practice of committing suicide by falling on one sword dates back to ancient Rome. So Plutarch records such death in the life of Brutus. Um, Translation, finally, he who is Brutus, spoke to Volumnius, which is really hard to not say voluminous, Mm -hmm. but it's Volumnius, himself in Greek, reminding him of their student life and begged him to grasp his sword with him and help him drive home the blow. And when Volumnius refused, uh, and the rest likewise, grasping with both hands the hilt of his naked sword, he fell upon it and died. So we've got this example from 1982. Then we've got ancient Rome, Uh, We know that the notion was already current in the English in the 16th century because it appears in the Miles Coverdale Bible in 1535 in the account of Saul, Samuel uh, 31, 4 and 5. Uh, This is really old English, so I hope I get through this. Then said Saul unto his wape bearer, draw out thy sword and thrust it thorough me. And these uncircumcised come not and slay me and make me a laughing stock of me. Nevertheless, his so he commits suicide before he can be killed, mm-hmm. which is a story in modern Bibles as well. But, but this like translation, was, like that's thousands of years old, right? Uh, the Bible, the Bible is yes, and that story is. But the, I mean, the story is. Mm-hmm. But this translation of the Bible in English, so falling upon his sword, is the English wording of this in the 1500s. Mm-hmm. So. It's, it doesn't mean, it might not mean what you think it means. I, th- I think it does mean. So Shakespeare alludes to a similar scene, the death of Brutus and Julius Caesar, 1601, although he didn't use a version of the falling on one sword text. Mm. So the expression is the, uh, this whole thing, everything we've heard, referred to so far is English based, but this whole thing is the anglicized equivalent of Harry Carey, which is Japanese samurai custom of committing suicide by disembowelment with a sword rather than face uh, dishonor of surrender. Hmm. So you fell on your sword. You, you killed yourself with your sword in a, in a, um, um, an act called Harry carry, which is a highly ritualized suicide hmm. for lack of a better word. Literally your belly is cut and you are no longer with us. Hmm. So even though that goes back to, I don't even know if I have a date written down for the Harry carry version of J- Japanese use of this way of dying with some zem- semblance of honor, but it's been known about in the West only since the mid 19th century and was referred to in 1856 in Harper, 1856, sorry, in Harper's magazine in an article called Harry Carey of Japan. In that piece, uh, Harper's used and po- possibly originated the common misspelling of Harry Carey because it's actually Harry Kiri. K I R I, but Harper's Bazaar. <laughs> That's right. Harper's Bazaar spelt it Harry Carey. So we all pronounce it wrong. We all spell it wrong. Uh, so it goes back to this is interesting because it goes back to this Japanese Harry Kiri, however you say it, act. It is referenced in English going back to Bible times with Saul. Mm-hmm. It is only became a regularly used uh well harry carey was only known since the end of the 1800s because in in western world because of uh, harper's magazine and as a readily used idiom only since 1982 Hmm. so it falling on your sword wasn't really used before lord peter carrington in in 1982 Hmm. so we knew about the act of harry carey Mm-hmm. And the dishonor and honor, uh, we knew about the story of the Bible, 
not really an idiom in English hmm. until uh, 1982. It's that's recent. really recent. Yeah, yeah. That the on the Bible one, uh, he'd already been critically wounded by arrows. Uh, Saul uh, getting tracked down by the Philistines. And so, so was, he knew that if he didn't do it, he's going to be found. He was going to be found, and they'd already killed his, his sons. Yeah, yeah. So it was like it, it's over. Like, but it, if I let myself live, they're just going to drag me through the streets and do a black hawk down on me. Yeah, yeah. We don't say that. No, you're going to get black hawk down. It's like, <laughs> what does that mean? Another bird reference. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it's interesting because it's oh, so, quite ancient, but not uh, as an idiom. So I said. Uh, earlier, so I says to the guy. <laughs> so when Saul fell on his sword, uh, the part that I was like uh, unfamiliar with is is his armor bearer does likewise. Oh yeah. And so <clears throat> the part that I was like, does he fall on his own sword or does he? No, they shish kebab. Did they they double layer it up? They spooning? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because that would be a quite the sight to come into if they're spooning death, like. <laughs> So he swords he 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 swords himself, and then his armor bearer is laying on top of him with the same same sword. Because it's a different story. That's funny. <laughs> I don't know. I doubt it, but I feel like that would have been mentioned because, well, because of because of how it's written. Yeah, I'm like it seems possible. I mean, do you think the sword was it his sword bearer? His armor bearer. Armor bearer. Yeah. What a crappy job. <laughs> Your job is to totally carry around. all the heavy stuff, <laughs> but you get to hang out with the king, so that's all right. Yeah, I yeah. Guess. Of all friends to have, it ended that's well. Not, that's not a terrible friend to have. I guess he just was like, if I'm not serving the king, I'm going to die anyway. They're, well, they're going to know, and then they're going to or torture. Him. Or is the king's death his fault in the world of honor as the armor bearer? I don't know. Yeah. It's a good question. Is an armor bearer just carrying his stuff around, or is he protecting the king using armor? <laughs> like he, he's like a human shield. <laughs> yeah, like well, with with armor, but like he's just running around, standing in front. in front of arrows. Yeah. Well, I guess he failed at that because the, the king was already critically wounded. And this is why he kebabbed himself. So should he? Do you think he should have killed himself beforehand? Like I did a terrible job. Sorry about that. I don't think I should he, kill myself. It, he wouldn't kill the king. No, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't kill the king. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then that would really have been a bad job. He's like, can you just do this one thing? You failed at armor bearing. Will you just do this one thing? No. You suck at everything. I got to do everything around here. <laughs> you guys are awful. I need better staff. Uh, I would be encouraging the king to just get the lightest armor all the time. You don't need that stuff. You don't need that. That stuff's heavy. Forget you that. You don't want that. Just, this is all this paper. Have you not seen the Knight's Tale? We can make it lighter. Paper mache. <laughs> No wonder the arrows got him. Uh, anyway. <laughs> there concludes the origin story of the idiom. Fall on your sword. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, sword related things. Yes. That uh, in the, the sea, the swordfish. And so it's this, because uh, when I was going through my journeys, a misconception that the sword like swordfish just run like through everything because <laughs> that he would just have like dead fish on stuck on him all the time that he couldn't eat because he has no like op opposable thumb like so he just has like like a big giant skewer yeah so apparently he does like he they slice and dice and just uses his speed to slice you as opposed to kebab you because a kebabbed fish at the end of his is stuck there it's just stuck there do you think that ever happens by accident He's just floating around looking at this fish like, oh, it's like how am I going to get this off? My friends are going to laugh. So. I <laughs> guess a swordfish can never fall on his own sword. <laughs> be very tricky. Yeah. Contortionist fish. Um, and so apparently they have very few. Do you think they joust? Like, <laughs> two swordfish. Oh the few natural predators, uh, except for. So they can slice like it has a sharp edge. It was it was saying I don't know like more like on the, the like the tip like still for, using the, the tip, tip thrashy mm. as opposed to like saw. Well, then they have for sure gotten stuff stuck out there. <laughs> yeah, so if you come across a swordfish that's got like a fish stuck on, they've the got end an angel it. fish on the end. Both of them are upset. <laughs> <laughs> so it has few natural predators except um, there's one mightier. It's the penfish. Yeah, <laughs> you're the worst. <laughs> 
There probably is a penfish. I bet you there's a penfish. The penfish is mightier than the swordfish. That's so stupid. <laughs> well, we should take this thing Pen home. Gillette kind of has pen and sword in his name. Well, he's got something sharp in his name. Gillette. Gillette. Razor. It's the best a man can get. So. <laughs> uh, Let's take this home. You want to? Yep. All right. Well, Riddlink. <laughs> heard of it? It's a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question. requires a two-part... Overlapping language, you okay over yeah, there? Be all right. Overlapping, uh, what did I say? Riddling is a game we like to play. It takes two-part trivia-based question, requires an overlapping two-part answer, overlapping by sound, syllable, word, or word. So, for example, last week we left you with this little doozy. Our idiom was "eat like a bird," and we left this riddling dangling out there. It might be Big Bird's address, but his diet is sparse. Once again, it might be Big Bird's address, but his diet is sparse. <laughs> got that one or you need a coughing break yeah sorry some people take a coffee break we take coughing breaks the correct answer away. is sesame street like a bird <laughs> the answer isn't sesame street although that is big bird's address the answer is not eat like a bird although that is the idiom last week the correct answer is sesame street like a bird and that's how you play riddling okay i've got a couple prepared i got some okay you go first so I should have done better work on this, but here we go. Swordfish tar. Take individual responsibility for Xiphius gladius. <laughs> wow. One more time. Take individual responsibility for the penfish's nemesis. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, fall on your swordfish. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would have never. I would, even though we just talked about it, I wouldn't have got the part there. that got me. In, uh, I was like, wonder what the Latin is for swordfish. A swordfish, and it was uh, Zephyrus gladius, as in a gladiator. Oh, it's completely useless. Use that around the water cooler. That's not useless. That's great. Gladius, which means sword. Huh. So good. Okay, what's yours? Oh right, we still have more game to play. <laughs> um, this deadly sin precedes autumn, so commit Harry Carry. This deadly sin precedes autumn, so commit Harry Carry. Wow. Sorry, it doesn't precede it autumn. It is autumn? It is autumn. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. As I was saying that, I'm like, that's not right. Tell them the whole thing one more time. All right, this deadly <laughs> sin is autumn, so commit Harry Carry. Oh, man. I still don't have an answer. I oh. think I've got all the bits and pieces. Well, I know that the... the, the deadly sin... Uh, Oh, yeah, no, the deadly sin does precede. I said, I got it right. This deadly sin precedes autumn. So think Pre of a deadly sin. Okay. I, I got So I got fall. Yeah. The fall on your sword. So the end. So precede means before. I, thank you. Before uh, the fall. This deadly sin. So, oh, I'm going with like the, the, the deadly sins, like gluttony and? And, and greed. And which one of those comes before the fall? Spring. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> Correct answer is summer. Pride comes before the fall oh, on your sword. No. Oh no, now I feel stupid. Pride comes before the fall. Yeah. Fall on your sword. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah. I just could not put it together. Yeah, I know. I I'd be the one at the table going, So you guys want to play a different game? <laughs> Because I'm stupid. It's like that trivial pursuit when no. you're playing. Sometimes you and just it's like get you're, a, you're the one guy with no pieces of pie in your in your thing. <laughs> People are like going for the end. I don't like pie anyway. <laughs> this is a stupid game. Okay, this is designed from you because of last week's random random Christendom music. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> DC talk. <laughs> okay. DC talk wonders if they'll make fools of us all. Oh. Whoa. So they'll take personal responsibility. Um, man, I I know DC that I know, one, yeah. DC Talk wonders if they'll make fools of us all, so they'll take personal responsibility. It's what if I stumble? What if I fall on my sword? Yes. It, is it just what if I fall? Yeah. Okay. What if I fall on my sword? Yeah. There you go. What if I stumble? <laughs> what if I fall? I knew you'd like it. What if I have something and make fools of us all? No one knows more random Christendom music than you. 
Uh, it's probably not true, but I know a fair amount. Yeah. Okay, I got one more, but let's leave it. It just dangled anyway out there. Villagitimate children, we would love to hear from you on Instagram at the dot village dot idiom or email us the village idiom podcast at gmail.com or whether it's the Facebook, the YouTubes, or the X at three minutes gone. Perfect. Here it is. This suicidal acceptance of responsibility oh dear. is what a judge says during disruption in the court. Hmm. This suicidal acceptance of responsibility is what a judge says during disruption in the court. And that is three minutes gone. Did you get it or not yet? Not yet. All right. You yeah. got a week. Perfect. Uh, I week. will chew on it. I will chew on it, and then I will chew on it some more. And then I will regurgitate, regurgitate it like the cud right into my mouth. And I will chew on it again. And then they will put it in my second stomach, and I'll be ready for you. Perfect. Wow. <laughs> That's elaborate. <laughs> I'm Skinny. I'm Jurassic Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. Falling on my side. Wow. That's three minutes gone.